Hi and welcome back to the channel. I'm here in my lab today with something I've been excited to test for a few weeks now, the Canon Avalon Q. This Char 256 ASIC miner has been running in my lab for about two weeks now and I want to share my real world experience with you. No hype, no marketing fluff, just honest numbers, practical insights and what it's actually like living with this machine. Full disclosure, Canon sent me this unit for testing with no strings attached. The test results and opinions I present here are totally my own. There's lots of videos online showing the unboxing and setup of this device, so I wanted to do something different and perhaps more meaningful. In this video, I'll talk about crypto mining basics, my hybrid solar and battery setup, I'll show you how I use this ginormous calculator as a hater, and most importantly, break down the real economics with my variable electricity rate here in Australia. Let's dive in. Before we get into the Avalon Q specifically, let me quickly explain how Bitcoin or crypto coins in general mining actually works, especially for anyone new to this space. Bitcoin uses something called SHA-256 mining. Think of it like a massive global lottery where miners are constantly guessing numbers to solve cryptographic puzzles. The first one to find the right answer gets to add the next block to the blockchain and earns the reward, which is currently 3.125 bitcoins per block. Here's the thing though, the Bitcoin network is processing over 900 exa hatches per second right now. That's 900 quintillion calculations every second. For context, this Avalon Q does 90 tera hashes per second, which sounds impressive until you realize it's just 0.0001% of the global network. This is exactly why home miners like me join mining pools. Think of it like buying lottery tickets as a group. We pool our computing power with thousands of other miners, and when the pool finds a block, everyone gets paid based on how much work they contributed. I've tested this unit on both f2pool.com and nicehash.com. f2pool is a traditional mining pool founded in 2013 and one of the largest pools worldwide. With f2pool, you get daily payouts when your balance reaches a certain minimum threshold. You can see the details here on their website. NiceHash works differently. It's actually a marketplace where you rent your computing power to buyers who pay in Bitcoin. NiceHash charges a service fee and pays out every few hours to their internal wallet. Both have worked flawlessly with the Apple and Q, which brings us to the actual hardware. Now here's where things get interesting. I'm not just plugging this into the wall. I've got it connected to a hybrid power system that automatically switches between solar, battery and grid power. During peak sunlight hours, the Avalon Q runs almost entirely on solar. I've got about 25 kilowatts of panels on the roof and this machine pulls between 830 watts in echo mode up to 1,600, approximately 674 watts in super mode. This means that on a decent sunny day, I can run it purely on solar power. When the sun starts going down, the system automatically switches to battery power. I've got about 20 kilowatts of storage. We can keep the miner running in echo mode for most of the night. Now, having said that, the combined draw from the house and the Avalon Q can drain the battery from full to no energy left at all in about five hours. So I have to be strategic how I use it. Especially in winter, where nights are much longer than days are, I'm very careful to use battery power carefully so not to expose uh, myself to high electricity prices at peak demand hours, especially in the early afternoons and evenings. My electricity provider gives me direct access to wholesale electricity prices, and this means that I have the benefit of very cheap electricity when the demand is low, but very expensive during peak demand. Differential can be multiple dollars per kilowatt hour. The beautiful thing is that switching between solar battery and grid all happens automatically. When wholesale electricity prices spike, which happens a lot in Australia, then the system will switch back to battery. I hope that I will be able to have more control of the consumption of the miner specifically via the various APIs. Amber, which is my electricity provider, has an API, but the Avalon Q right now doesn't. More about this later. 
Through my electricity provider's a web app interface, I can see exactly where my power is coming from minute by minute, and more importantly, what it's actually costing me to run the house and in extension, this miner. Speaking of costs, let's talk about something that most people overlook, heat reuse. This machine puts out serious heat. In super mode, that's 1074 watts. It's basically a 1.6 kilowatt space heater that also happens to mine Bitcoin. I've positioned it strategically in my lab space, not right next to me, of course, but for the back, there was the back of the lab. And during winter months, it's genuinely useful heating, creating a pleasant working environment. In standard mode, I can only hear a gentle humming from the fans. It can get more noisy on super mode. Right now, it's running in echo mode and you probably can't hear anything. That's echo mode. I measured the ambient temperature difference running the Avalon Q in standard mode and it raises my lab temperature by about 4 to 5 degrees. That's heat I could have otherwise paid for with my standard heating system. My lab has good sound and heat insulation so heating is very efficient. Here's a practical impact. My normal electric heater draws about a thousand watts and costs me an average 15 cents per hour to run. The Avalon Q in standard mode draws 1,400 watts, so that's 40% more power, but it's also earning crypto coin while heating the space. I decided to mine Bitcoin hash, hoping that my earnings will be better. Now I'll be honest, this becomes problematic in summer. That same heat output that's useful in winter becomes a liability when it's 35 degrees outside. I'll work on this problem in a few months because I really want to take advantage of the ample sunlight and the full production capacity of my solar panels. Let me show you what daily operation actually looks like. This is the Avalon family app. It's clean, responsive, and gives you all the data you actually need. At the moment, it's the only way to control the operation of the miner. You can start and stop it and select the mode of operation. I can switch between the three power modes instantly. Watch this, I'm currently in standard mode, pulling 1,400 watts and delivering about 75 to 80 telehashes per second. Switching to echo mode, you can see that the power drops to around 800 watts, but the hash rate comes down to about 54 terahashes per second. The efficiency actually improves in echo mode, you get more hash rate per watt. And in super mode, power jumps to 1674 watts, hash rate climbs to around 90 terahashes per second. More absolute performance, but less efficient. You can also access everything through the web panel, which gives you more information about what the miner is doing, but it doesn't offer a way to control it. You can edit the pool configuration though. I can see rejected shares, pool connection status, the real time and average hash rates, the power consumption and more, which is everything that you need to know that the machine is running optimally. The Avalon Q also has a small display on the front of the machine right here that shows basic statistics, including the device IP address, which is very important when you set up the machine for the first time. By the way, you can see here that I'm using wired Ethernet, but you can also opt for Wi-Fi using the included USB Wi-Fi adapter. All right, now let's talk about the elephant in the room. Does this thing actually make money? I'm not going to give you specific profit calculations, and here's why. The variables are absolutely staggering. Look at what changes constantly. Crypto coin prices fluctuate by the minute. Network difficulty adjusts every two weeks and has been climbing steadily. My electricity costs through Amber change every few minutes based on wholesale pricing and I've seen it swing from negative 5 cents to over 40 cents per kilowatt in a single day. Then there's the weather which affects my solar generation. Cloud cover, seasonal changes, even dust on the panels impacts how much free electricity I get. And that's before we consider the heating value, which is useful in winter, but becomes a cooling cost in summer. Pool block varies too. Sometimes F2 pool finds blocks faster than expected, sometimes slower. Nice hash buyer demand fluctuates based on what's profitable to mine at any given moment. So here's the reality. Small-scale mining like this is almost certainly unprofitable if you just plug it in and let it run at fixed settings. The margins are too thin and you are competing against industrial operations with cheaper electricity and better economies of scale. 
but here's what I'm actually doing. This is an experiment. I'm running the Avalon Q for the next three months and tracking the most important variables. Power consumption, solar generation, electricity costs, heat output, and mining earnings. In three months, I have the numbers based on actual Australian conditions, not theoretical calculations. I share all of the data in a follow-up video, the good, the bad, and whether this was worth it financially. But more importantly, I'm treating this as a development project. I'm building control software that integrates with AMBER's real-time pricing API to automatically adjust the miners' operation. When electricity is cheap or even negative, ramp up to super mode. When it's expensive, scale back or shut down entirely. The goal isn't just to mine Bitcoin, it's to create an intelligent system that responds to market conditions in real time. That's where the real potential lies for small-scale miners like us. This brings me to the technical challenge I'm most excited about, building an intelligent control system. Right now, I have to manually switch between modes or use the app. But I'm actually developing control software that integrates with multiple APIs to automate these decisions. Amber provides a real-time wholesale pricing through their API. I can query electricity costs every 30 minutes and automatically adjust mining intensity. When pricing goes negative, which actually happens with renewable oversupply, that's when you want to ramp up to super mode. My solar system also has an API that reports real-time generation. The goal is to have the miner automatically scale its power consumption to match the available solar production, therefore maximizing the use of free electricity. I imagine a system that continuously optimizes based on real-time electricity pricing from AMBA, solar production levels, weather forecasts for heating and cooling needs, Bitcoin or other coin network difficulty changes, and poor performance statistics. The challenge is getting API access from Canon for the Avalon Q. The current app and web interface clearly have this capability, I just need programmatic access to the same controls. And this is where the innovation potential lies for small-scale miners. We can't compete on raw efficiency with industrial operations, but we can be smarter about when and how we operate. Canon, if you're listening, please give us API access. The community of tinkerers and developers would create amazing applications that could showcase your hardware's capabilities. So the bottom line on the Canon Avalon Q, this is excellent hardware. Its build quality is solid, it's been running for several weeks without a single issue, and the performance matches specifications exactly. It's been warming my lab and has been earning me Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. The software is genuinely good. The app is responsive, the web interface works well, and I've never had any connectivity problems. For a first mining experience, it's been trouble-free. Once the API is available, a whole lot of potential will be released. Financially, when considering the cost of the hardware, profitability is unlikely unless you have access to free or very cheap electricity. When you factor in heat reuse during winter and hybrid solar operations, then the economics become more compelling. Learning and using the Avalon Q has been a fantastic learning experience for me. Understanding the implications of power management, heat utilization, and getting hands-on with crypto mining has been incredibly valuable to me. I've done this before, but with the Raspberry Pi, so the competition was totally skewered towards the learning experience only. There was no potential for profit there. If you're thinking about getting into Bitcoin or any coin mining at all, then the Avalon Q is a solid choice. Just make sure that you understand your electricity costs and have a plan for the heat that comes out of this machine. I'm planning a follow-up video in a few months to report on mining in summer, when I'll have a lot more solar power, but when the heat from this machine will become a real problem. And with a bit of luck, I'll be able to use the API to set up some automation. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out all that. So let me know in the comments what you think about the Avalon Q, and especially if you have any mining experience and wisdom to share. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.